Now, on Ice Road Truckers. This is it. This is do or die. Drivers, take it to the limit. Oh! Come on, baby. Come on. We're right there. Come on. Oh, shit. And the road has already claimed a victim. But these icy trails... The ice got nothing supporting it. ...aren't done yet. As the moon rises, the temperatures drop on a remote ice road deep in the Manitoba backcountry. I have a 53-foot van load of building supplies headed to Tadouli. My first run by myself without my partner, my business partner, and my friend. And that's a lot of weight on my shoulders. After the death of her business partner, Daryl Ward, Lisa Kelly's trying to keep their trucking business alive, lying solo on her first run of the year. I got the loads, so as long as I'm running and everything's going smoothly, I might be able to keep up and I might be able to keep this business running. I just jacked off my truck for the first time ever in my entire life. The back of my trailer's over there. Oh my gosh. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna get out of this. Okay, I'm gonna get out and look. I can't get out of my door. I have to get out the passenger side. I can't get out that door. Oh my gosh. How did it how did I even get in that position? That corner's really slippery. I was coming around it and the trucks just started to slide because it's like it's freshly plowed. And when I hit the brakes, it locked them, and that's what jackknifed me. I'm not even sure I can get out of it. I think I'll just try to back out. I guess that's my best option at this point. or something. I shouldn't have done anything to the engine. I don't know why that's not working. The transmission looks fine. I have a drive line. I have a transmission. It's not hanging. I don't know. It's going into the gear hole. There's something with the clutch. 
clutch. That's what's wrong with it. Maybe it never gets wet all the way out. Maybe it's depressed the whole time. There's no play in it. It's my clutch. That's what's wrong with it. That's why it's not engaging. Because it can't, go, it goes into gear, but it can't engage into gear because the clutch is, that's what it is. It's a clutch. It's not my transmission. I know what it is. With nighttime temperatures dangerously low, Lisa is going to have to wait till daylight to try and fix her way out of this jam. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do because I got the trailer right there in the ditch and my truck in the ditch and I can't go forward. Hundreds of miles from the nearest town, her only option now is to bunk down for the cold night. Five hundred miles away, as the sun rises over the Ontario wilderness. Boy, she's rough. Makes it really hard conditions for driving on. Todd Dewey's in the thick of it. Yeah, we're just headed in with the load here in the Round Lake community on the ice road. Try to get these loads to the communities as fast as we can. In a push to clear up their backlog of hauls, Polar has their top driver tackling one of the toughest trails. Todd's carrying a load of construction supplies for the isolated community of Round Lake. It's a big dash to get these loads in as fast and as quick as possible as we can, and the most efficiently without breaking our trucks or possibly pushing too hard and getting stuck out on ice road for another three or four or five days because you're stuck and you can't get out or you broke your truck. Only 80 miles into his journey. What do we got going on up here? Looks like there's a truck off the road. I don't know if you slid off the road or what. The roads already put one truck on the sidelines. You know the motto, if I'll ever leave a trucker behind, I'm going to stop and see if he needs a hand. I'm going to knock on his door and make sure he's OK. You need a hand? Um, stuck pretty good. I don't know. I was shoveling under there. Yeah, I see that you had your shovel out. You were shoveling. Yeah. I got a nice big toe strap. We can hook it on there, and I could give you a couple good tugs. Up that way? Yeah. yeah just, you know, I'll stay on the road. Grab a couple gears and we'll see if we can't pop it out. Okay. Two other trucks were coming. These roads aren't very wide. He got off onto the shoulder a little bit too much, and when he got into the shoulder, the snowbank caught him and sucked him right down into the ditch. So, and they, the other truckers, I don't know who they were, but I sure would like to know because they didn't even bother to stop and help him after he pulled over the road so that they could go by. Hopefully, this is going to be enough to get him out. You just never know until you try. Okay, as soon as you see me going, let them start turning. And then I'll, if I can't get it the first time, I'll back up and get a little more speed. I'm gonna try to pull this guy out, hold on. This is a situation you need to use your chains, but it does put a lot of stress on my chains I need for the ice road. I don't want to tear them up and not have them for the ice road. I'm not going to give up quite yet. I'm going to put everything I got into it, okay, but there's no guarantees. Todd's hoping his tire chains will give his rig the extra traction it needs to pull the disabled truck yep, those are tight. back onto the road. We're going to make her a little longer this time, so I get a little more speed. To give him more of a run, he also uses a chain to extend his toe strap. I got to get the momentum or it's not going to get him. Get in position and see if I can get a little more traction, a little more speed this time, maybe pop him out. Keep your fingers crossed, boys. Hang on. 
Hold the strap now, that might not work. Holy! Smashed in the freaking door pretty good, as you can see. I think the chain just popped free, didn't it? Oh, it broke my strap. Yeah. You don't have one either, huh? No. Yeah, it broke my strap. I'm gonna have to tie some type of knot in here. Todd re-rigs the tow strap and prepares for round two. I'm gonna hook up the chains now and put chains to it where it's got a good hard bam when it hit. Where there's a wheel, there's a way, right? Once that sucker pulls tight, she's gonna come tight. Please let this work. This is it, this is do or die. Come on, you son of a bitch, come on. I told you we'd get you. No problem. No problem. Todd has come through for a fellow trucker. Just taking my chains off. Damn it. But it came at a price. Spinning out, trying to really dig the guy out. It's broken both of my chains. The stress of pulling the 40-ton truck has destroyed his tire chains. Junk. Both these are completely broke. The chain breaks like that, they're absolutely no good. And that creates an issue because now I got no chains. Without an essential cold weather tool, Todd will be at the mercy of the 320 miles of ice road still ahead of him. When you see someone else stuck out in the bush, like that guy's been stuck, you don't just drive by him. The only bad part about it is now I got no change. As Todd faces an uncertain journey, 200 miles to the northwest, An ice road legend awakes from summer hibernation. Ah, good morning, world. 45-year trucking veteran Alex Debogorski's back in the saddle, driving for Polar. Comb the fleas out of my hair. But it's not the truck's odometer that weighs heavy on his mind. One day I got up and looked in the mirror. I said, who is that guy? He's got gray hair. It's like, what happened? It's like, all of a sudden, I'm like my dad. I wouldn't talk to a guy 60 years old. Like, those guys don't know nothing. And now I'm one of them. <laughs> Next, I make breakfast. Can of beans. Just the old style can open. It always works. Secret to life and success is liking to work. It's a state of mind, and I'm going to work as long as I can. Maybe I can surprise a couple people. <laughs> mm. I feel good. Little, little, little. And I'm off. North, north to Pangasi. Alex is hauling an urgent load of construction supplies to the First Nations community of Pangasi. 200 miles northeast of Winnipeg. I really want to get in there and get the heck back and get another load. With the loads piling up at Polar, 
The pressure's on for the old pro to pick up the pace. For these folks back here, they got this little window. And uh, if we don't take it in by truck, they'll have to take it in by plane, which makes it very expensive. Holy mackerel. What do we got here now? Well, there's a lake over here and another lake over here, and they must be running in between. Alex has come to a creek crossing. Small water bodies will freeze quicker than large bodies of water. So I'm going to stop and take a little poke around. In his many years running the ice roads, Alex has learned that creek ice is often a good predictor of what to expect on lake ice. And with a 10-mile lake crossing ahead of him, Alex wants a closer look. Boy, if you ever got dropped a wheel in there, you wouldn't come out. See, that's where the problem is, eh? The water was up there, and the water was holding the ice up, and then the water went down for some reason. And the ice got nothing supporting it. That's, that's dangerous. Fluctuations in temperature can create a dangerous gap between the surface ice and the water below. And on an ice crossing, that's a recipe for disaster. A little bit of open water there. I wonder how deep that is. Here's a stick we'll go over and have a look. Whoa! Ooh. Holy back. Oh. <laughs> well, I know how deep the water is anyway. <laughs> it's up to here. I gotta go empty my boots out. Holy Mac, that was really smart. You think the old guy have more brains than that? Before his wet clothes can freeze, dry things out a little bit. Alex retreats to the safety and warmth of his cab. Hopefully, uh, the ice is thick enough for me to cross. The seasoned veteran hopes the fragile creek ice isn't a bad omen for what lies ahead on the crossing over a fishing lake. Put the old ticker to the test for you. Two hundred fifty miles away. Hey, staff, it's Mark. Hi. Hey, um, I got a, I got a problem up there. Okay. Young Steph Custance is stationed at Big Trout, earning her stripes doing grunt work on the winter roads for polar owner Mark Ahakowicz. I, I need all these trailers fixed up and running back up on the roads as quick as possible. Okay. The loads are. It's kind of like go for it, go for this, go for that. And you just gotta run and go do it. Yeah. But that's what I have to do to prove that I'll do the job, then I'll do it. It's gonna take a little bit of effort, but uh, you know what? Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put you to the test. Get the job done. I will. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. So I'm gonna take this to uh, Pickle Lake. Steph has been tasked with hauling a broken down trailer to Polar's repair shop at Pickle Lake. That's a big trout to uh, rescue this trailer. And uh, I showed up, it wouldn't move, all the lines are broke. The mission will save Polar valuable time by not bringing the busted trailer back to Winnipeg. Oh, come on. But the 300-mile journey on steep mountain grades is a challenge for even the most seasoned driver. Try not to spin out and lose control today, or ditch it. I lose my load, I lose my paycheck, I'm stuck on the road. It costs everyone money and time. And it's not good. Really not good.
while Steph powers on to pick a lake. 400 miles away in northern Manitoba, I need the shovel so I can give myself a decent chance of getting out of here. If I have a chance of actually getting out of here. Stranded with a broken clutch and far from the nearest town, Lisa's made it through the night. Take a look at this box over here. See this box? This is where my tools are, and I can't get to them. With her tool compartment jammed shut, she can't fix the broken clutch. I'll do as much as I can. The only thing Lisa can do is try and dig out her tires and hope another trucker passes by. Make this as easy as possible. Finally, 14 hours into her efforts, help arrives. Finally, who? Problem. Hi. Troubles, eh? I'm in Hi. trouble. The men are hunters on their way home. My clutch isn't working right now? All right. Uh, I've been a mechanic since I've been 18 years old. I'll go get all my tools. And lucky for Lisa, they're the right guys for the job. What do you need? Half inch wrench or socket. You've been here for hours already, eh? I've been here since last night. I had to sleep on it. It was 2 in the morning when I finally went to bed. Hey, your clutch is way out of adjustment. You're half inches out of whack, and your eighth inch, you got nothing. You've got no free play, so we'll have to adjust that. This is just a temporary fig. Your clutch is way out of adjustment. All right, try that. Okay, let's try this. If I have a clutch, that would be awesome. <laughs> that was a problem! Lisa's clutch is back in action. Okay, here we go. But she still has to get her jackknife rig straightened out. It easy with that clutch, like even though you got pedal, it's uh, not very good. So I'm slowing my mojo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm so proud of myself for like properly diagnosing what the problem was, and I'm really proud of myself for figuring out it wasn't the transmission, that it was the clutch, because that's. Who would ever figure that out? Todd, Daryl, me? After being stranded for over 15 hours, Lisa's finally back on the road. Do you hear it just snapping and cracking down there? Something ain't right. But with 350 miles yet to go on an ailing truck, Ooh. she's not out of the woods yet. I have to be really careful with the clutch, because it could go. It ain't over yet. In Manitoba. Talk about the old curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity almost drowned this cat. <laughs> An ice road legend is making his way north to Pungasi. Well, at least the water stopped running out of him. On his first run of the season, 
Alex has gotten off to a rocky start, falling into a freezing creek while testing the ice surface. I'm still soaking wet. I've got no plans for going swimming again today. I got my fingers crossed, and uh, good Lord willing, we're going to get there in one piece. Oh, ice crossing. It's a big lake. As Alex approaches the 10 mile long crossing at Fishing Lake, kind of weird. He doesn't like what he sees. See the ice up there on the, on the side? How it's hung up on the rock? It almost looked like the water was three feet higher and it all went down. As with the creek he fell into earlier, warm weather is causing the water levels on the lake to start dropping. A surefire recipe for unstable ice. But with the community waiting for its overdue shipment, I think we'll go give her a shot. Alex rolls on. Water under the ice does support the ice. As we drive along, the ice bends and the water holds it up. If there's no water underneath the ice, and it has no support. It's just the ice itself, which generally is not good because uh, you know, the whole lake can settle or the ice can drop and break and dump you off of it. Hopefully, it'll be fine. But it does have a bunch of cracks in it. They seem to be more noticeable than usual. They got flags here because there's something wrong with the ice right in here. Pretty good holes in the ice right there. I don't know why. I'm coming to the end of the lake. I'm just about the other side now. On solid ground, Alex makes it to the village of Pangasi. Yeah, another test. Kept testing the heart to see whether I'm going to fall over in a job, so I survived that one. <laughs> Delivering some much-needed furnaces to the remote community. But one of the biggest challenges, just about in any job that has a need for some expertise, is having faith in oneself. Lots of forklift work here. OK, time to get it done. While Alex offloads 200 miles away in Ontario's remote wilderness. Well, looks like just a few more miles. I'll be rolling into Round Lake, finally. Hauling critical building supplies, Todd Dewey is in the home stretch. Just about there, guys. Oh, f but not across the finish line yet. Solid black ice, steep ass hill. Damn it. This is exactly what I was worried about. Losing my chains and running into hills like this. Earlier. Spinning out, trying to really dig the guy out. It's broken both of my chains. Todd destroyed his tire chains, pulling a stranded trucker out of the ditch. And now... Since it's 18% grade, that's pretty damn steep. He's facing a sharp drop, followed by an even steeper uphill. I don't know what to do, because if I get stuck, I got no chains. Worst case scenario is you get to the top of the hill, you don't make it, and you start sliding backwards, you jackknife and wreck your truck, and then I'm done for the season. With the town just on the other side of the hill. Ground Lake, here we go. Todd has no choice. Hang the hell on. Roller steady.
hundreds of steep ass long frickin' hill. And I'm now in the community of Round Lake, delivering my load of building supplies. Oh yeah, we can get it open. I tried to pull the guy out of the ditch. It took me three hours to finally get him out, but one of the big chains snapped. It almost went all the way through the door. I don't know how I'm gonna explain that one to the boss. So you know it was a long journey up here to Round Lake, but you know what, at the end of the day, we got it in the community, we got them their supplies. To see the smiles on the people's faces when they show up, when you brought them everything they need, that's what this is all about. That's why we take the risk right there. Meanwhile, as night falls on the winter roads, temperatures plunge and 250 miles away. The snow banks are really close together, like making it really tight for me to get through and it's really windy. Steph is fighting her way back to Pickle Lake. We just gotta go. This trailer's important. The rookie's tackling one of the toughest roads in Ontario, looking to get a four-ton broken trailer in for immediate repairs. I gotta get a lot of speed to make it over this hill. Now she's facing a 12% grade, slick with ice. Come on. Come on, just crest the top beside me. get over this hill, Steph will need a run and start. Which means the young driver must back down a twisting road full of blind turns. I see that. And treacherous ditches. So just back down it again or chain up right here? I will just chain up right there. Just throw your chain down here over the hill. With the road behind her blocked, Steph can't get the momentum she needs to scale the hill. Her only option is to throw on tire chains and hope for enough traction to crawl over the steep grade. On her first run of the season, oh, man. the novice struggled to chain up on flat ground in broad daylight. I'm not around anymore. I need to walk and everyone needs to leave me alone. Now. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna chain up right here. All right. Steph has to throw her chains on a hill in minus 30 degree weather. A big line of the people, oversized loads. And do it with an audience. I'm holding all of them up. I decided to be the rookie. Oh, come on. It's 
strong enough to get up the hill. Under pressure, Steph has stepped up. I pray to God this works. Because I got no more feeling in my fingers of toes. The only question is, will a chain's hold? I'm ready to go. Yeah, I just hit her, hit her hard. Just made right with it. Give me to it. over the incline. As day breaks over the winter road. I'm gonna do it. I am in Pickle Lake about to deliver my load. Steph's pushed through the night and clawed her way over the last 50 miles into Pickle Lake. I'm taking this trailer uh, just to a parking lot, and uh, another driver's going to grab it. Hey, Steph, how's it going? Good. Your load's here. Drop her right there. I'll get my another guy to come in, hook it up, and we'll take it to the shop and get her worked on. Awesome. That's yeah. Okay, thanks. Love awesome, that. Steph. With the job done. It felt so good to get that trailer dropped off. Steph's making her way back, ready next assignment. Feels good to know that I'm going back out on the road and get home to my boy. People might think that we're just truckers and we're just this and that. No, man, people need what we have. And, and we also need the money too, right? To feed our families. And that, to me, is all that matters. 800 miles away, in the far reaches of Manitoba, Lisa Kelly's limping her broken truck up the rough and desolate trail to Tuduli Lake. I need my clutch to get me as far as I could possibly get. That's, oh my gosh. This is officially called limping the truck. Already a day late delivering the load of building supplies. The renegade trucker needs to come through. She's going to keep her company alive. I have not seen any other trucks. Nothing. That means my load of stuff and I'm bringing them? That's it. I need to get this to them because they need all this stuff and I'm the only one. It is just cracking and snapping every time I hit a bump. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that's a terrible sound. Trying to keep her damaged truck from giving out before she makes it to her destination. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with this truck. I have to get it to a shop and see how much damage is actually done, what's actually wrong with the clutch, what's wrong with the brake. I have all these contracts backed up, and I just have, I have now just lost my ability to fulfill the contracts. Finally, after 900 grueling miles. Come here, Woo. Get this delivered, make some people happy. Lisa rolls into Tuduli Lake with the town's critical building supplies. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi Hello. Nice to meet you. What's that to my community? Yeah, thank you. Is this your stuff? This is our stuff for housing we've been waiting for 
Thank for you for bringing it, because it's really needed up here in the north. How and long have you been waiting been, for it? Well, it was on order last uh, summer. Last summer? So last year. But wow. It only comes in on the winter road. We got no no summer road. And without people like you, we'd be having a hard time in the north. Lisa's first load of the season is a success, but keeping her company afloat is going to be an uphill battle. I'm facing the worst situation. I mean, it sucks what happened, and all these loads have backed up. And now I don't have Daryl, I don't have my partner. And I'm trying to just play catch up from past years, try to maintain what I got to do this year. It's insanity. Next time. Hang on. On Ice Road Truckers. Whoa. Can't steer, bike. Temperatures rise. This is supposed to be one of the coldest winters ever. Look. You see those tracks? And until now... I keep thinking I'm going to find a body laying in the snow. Alex thought he'd seen it all. Oh.